Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an wa ala seyyidihim wa khatamihim habibi illahi al-alameen abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. Wa ala ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-ma'sumin. السلام على رسول الله أمين الله على وحيه وعزائم أمره الخاتم لما سبق والفاتح لما استقبل والسلام عليه ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على صاحب السكينة السلام على المدفون في المدينة السلام على المنصور المؤيد السلام على أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا الإمام أبي الحسن علي بن موسى الرضا صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم Congratulations on the anniversary of the birthday of our eighth Imam, our beloved Al Imam Ali ibn Musa al Rida alayhi salatu was salam, which is on the 11th of the month of Dil Qa'dah. The Imam was born in the city of Al Madinah al Munawwara. Only two weeks after the martyrdom of his grandfather, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, alayhi He was born 137 years after the departure of his great-grandfather, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Imam lived for only 55 years. 52 years in the city of Medina, his birthplace, his home, and the last three years of his life, he lived in the city of Tus in Khurasan. And his life is divided into three periods. The first period is under the leadership of his father, Al-Imam Musa Al-Kadhim alayhi salatu was salam, for 35 years in the city of Medina. From the day he was born, he was born, Imam Al-Rida was born in the year 148 Hijri and died 203 Hijri, a total of 55 years. So the first 35 years, were under the leadership, the imam of his father, who was also killed by Harun al-Abbasi. His grandfather, Imam al-Sadiq, Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq, was murdered by another Abbasite caliph, the second Abbasite caliph, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, in the year 148. His father was murdered by another Abbasite Caliph Harun, Abu Abdullah Harun, in the year 183 in Baghdad. So Imam al Rida was not able to see his father for almost 10 years. The last 10 years of Imam Musa's life, Imam Musa al Kadhim's life, who was buried in Kadhimain, was in jail between two jails, the jail of Basra and three different jails in Baghdad until he died inside the jail in year 183. Imam al was in Medina. Imam Musa al-Kadhim was taken from Medina to Basra first by the order of Harun. He was jailed there. And then he was transferred to a notorious jail in Baghdad, the jail of as Sindhi ibn Shahik, the third jail. He was transferred 
to the first, second, and the third one was very notorious, infamous jail. And he died in jail by the order of Harun al-Abbas. Those Imams were murdered because the Abbasid who happened to be the cousins of Ahlul Bayt. They are not foreigners. Bani al-Abbas, the Abbasid dynasty, are the cousins of Ahlul Bayt, the cousins of the Prophet. They are not foreigners, they are not strangers. But when it comes to dunya, to dominating and ruling and grabbing this chair, this seat, a brother can murder his own brother. Qabil murdered Habil. And it wasn't over oil. At that time, there was no oil. It wasn't over gold or jewelry. This murder took a place because of only one thing. Because of hasad, because of envy. When he realized that God had accepted the offering of his brother and he rejected his own offering because he didn't give his donation, his offering was not from his heart. It was out of embarrassment. And God accepted, فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا God accepted the offering of Habil and rejected the offering of Qabil. He got very jealous of his brother and he decided to murder him. He's from his father and his mother. And at that time, there were no many people on earth. There were only four. So there were plenty of resources and space. Not like now, seven or eight billion. Four. But out of, and he's the, father, he's the son of the prophet. His father, Adam, is a prophet, is a leader. But look what dunya does to people. It makes them forget their origin, their, forget their family, forget their principles. They forget their values, and they are ready to murder each other over dunya. His brother answered him, he said, I have no problem with you. I'm not fighting with you. There is no rivalry between us. God accept the work of the righteous, of the honest. إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Banu al-Abbas, they are the descendants of the uncle of the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had several uncles. One of them is Abu Lahab. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab bin Watab. He's the paternal uncle of the Prophet, the brother of his father. Imagine. Abu Lahab is the brother of Abdullah, the father of the Prophet. But again, out of envy and jealousy. Abu Lahab used to love the Prophet until the age of 40. When the Prophet declared that I am Rasulullah, inni Rasulullah ilaykum jami'ah, I'm the messenger of God. He turned overnight, he turned 180 degrees against his nephew. Another uncle of the Prophet was Abu Talib, on the other hand. Abu Talib, he gave a preference to the Prophet over his son Ali ibn Abi Talib. During the siege of Mecca, when the life of the Prophet was in danger, Abu Talib comes in the middle of the night to the Prophet. He takes him out of his bed. He puts Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, in his bed. So if Quraysh, they come and they attack the camp, they will kill Ali, not the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Goodness and kindness and purity runs in his blood, Abu Talib. And as long as Abu Talib was alive, Quraysh could not touch the Prophet. 
They couldn't hurt him. They would hurt him verbally, but not physically. The moment Abu Talib died that year, the year of sadness, because two beloved friends and confidants of the Prophet died, Abu Talib and Khadija, within weeks, within weeks. They started attacking the Prophet. And the Prophet could not stay in Mecca anymore. He left. So this is his uncle, Abu Talib. Then he had another uncle, Al-Abbas. Not Al-Abbas Abu Al-Fadlha in Karbala. Don't get, because some people, they get mixed between the two. No. This is the uncle of the Prophet. Al-Abbas, again, did not believe in the Prophet in the beginning, unfortunately. He accepted Islam after the Battle of Badr. And in fact, he came to fight his uncle, Prophet Muhammad, in the Battle of Badr with Abu Sufyan. Him and Abu Sufyan, Sakhr ibn Harb, Abu Sufyan's name is Sakhr ibn Harb. The stone, the son of war, imagine. Sakhr means stone, Harb means war. Stone in the war. This is his name, Abu Sufyan. What a beautiful and kind and nice, lovely name. Abu Sufyan, he was buddy with Al-Abbas, two buddies, drinking together, you know, having fun together in Mecca. So he came with him to fight his nephew in the Battle of Badr. The Muslims, they captured the Abbas. They didn't murder him. They captured him. They put him in a tent next to the tent of the Prophet. He was handcuffed. Abbas could not sleep the night because of the pain. And the Prophet would hear his moaning, his voice. His voice. So the Prophet could not sleep too. So the Prophet pleaded to his community. He said, if you want, I'm not forcing you. I'm just asking you to just release him from the handcuff so he can sleep. This is my uncle, the brother of my father. He said, of course, Ya Rasulullah, of course. And then after this incident, the Prophet freed him after the Battle of Badr. He went to Mecca and then he came back to Medina and he accepted Islam. So Al-Abbas accepted Islam in the third year of Hijrah, because the Battle of Badr was in the second year. And then he moved from Mecca to Medina. He had a son, very great son, by the name of Abdullah. Abdullah ibn Abbas. Great son, great scholar. And the reason why he's great, he died when... when uh, when the Prophet died, this son, Abdullah, was only 10 years old. So he barely saw the Prophet. He was 10 years old when the Prophet died. But then his mentor and his teacher was his first cousin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was raised by Imam Ali. Not only him was raised, the son of Abu Bakr was raised by Imam Ali. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, great personality in the history of Islam. This man, when his father died, Asma, the wife of Abu Bakr, married Imam Ali. And he was a, man, a year and a half. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr was only a, a year and a half when he came into the custody of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali, alayhi salam. So he was raised. Biologically, he's the son of Abu Bakr. Spiritually and mentally, and intellectually, he's the son, the product of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. He became a great leader, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Same thing with Abdullah ibn Abbas. He is the spiritual, the intellectual son of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he became, he got the title of Habr al-Ummah. Habr means a great scholar. Habr is mentioned in the Quran. Ahbar. Ahbar are the scholars. Habr al ummah Because he was expert in the tafsir of the Quran. 
the exegesis of the Quran. And he says, every word I know about the Quran, I've taken it from my first cousin, Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Abdullah ibn Abbas had a son. His son's name is Ali. This Ali had a son. His name is Muhammad. Muhammad had two sons. One of them is Abu al-Abbas al-Saffah and the other is Al-Mansur. Those two became the first caliphs in the Abbasid dynasty. So they are the, the grandchildren of Al-Abbas, which is the uncle of the Prophet. And they are cousins of the Prophet and cousins of Amir al muminin And they are cousins with Imam al-Sadiq, Imam al-Kadhim, Imam al-Ridha, and other Imams. Same family of Bani Hashim. But when it comes to the seat, to the dunya, to the chair, they know no one. In fact, in fact, Harun, who murdered Imam al kadhim he went to visit Mecca and Medina with his son. So his son said to him when he was standing before the grave of the Prophet, the Caliph Harun was standing before the grave of the Prophet. His son said to him, Father, don't you think that the family of the Prophet and Amir al muminin and his children have more right to this matter, meaning leadership and khilafah? He said, yes. He said, then why we are here? Why you are grabbing this seat? He said to him, listen, son. لو نازعني صاحب هذا القبر لضربت عنقه. If the one who's sleeping in this grave he wants to fight with me over this seat, I will behead him. Meaning, if Prophet Muhammad stands today and he says, "Give me this seat back," I will behead him. لضربت عنقه. This is dunya. This is dunya. While I am speaking to you now, two friends in Sudan, two generals in the Sudanese army are fighting, but they are not being hurt or injured. Civilian people, civilian, thousands and thousands of civilian people who are already poor, impoverished, a country that suffers from hunger and starvation. And above that, there is a civil war between two friends, two comrades. They were working in the same army, you know, friends for the last 50 years of their life. Why? Over government. Over who's the president? Who's the leader? When it comes to leadership and a presidency and the office and Riasa, a brother may murder his own brother. This is what Bani al-Abbas did to Ahl al-Bayt. In fact, Bani al-Abbas, when they came to power, when they succeeded after Bani Umayyah, they said, we are here to give victory to Ahlul Bayt, to bring Ahlul Bayt back, to bring Ali ibn Abi Talib and his children back, because they are the rightful successors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This was their slogan from day one, that we are fighting Bani Umayyah, to restore, to restore this matter, this leadership for Ahlul Bayt. But when they came to the office, <laughs> when someone comes to the palace, he's in the street and all of a sudden he's in the palace, all the treasury, all the money, all the wealth is, is in his control. He's not going to let go. He's not going to let go. And therefore, Mansur al-Abbasi, murdered Imam al-Sadiq, Harun al-Abbasi murdered Imam al-Kadhim, and Ma'moon murdered Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha alayhi salatu wassalam. The second period of the Imam was after the martyrdom of his father Imam al-Kadhim in the city of Baghdad. 
And that lasted for 17 years in Medina. His leadership was altogether 20 years his imamah, 17 years of them in Medina, but the last three years were in Khurasan. Why did the imam move to Khurasan? The imam moved to Khurasan because after the death of Ma'mun, and this is what you have to know this and memorize by heart, why Khurasan became so important. Originally, Khurasan was a rich land, rich with the scholars. And if you count today, the Muslim scholars, whether they are Sunnis or Shia, most of them, majority of them, they come from Iran and specifically from Khurasan and Ray, Tahran. But many of them, they come from that province, Khurasan. Many, Sunnis and Shias. So it was rich with the scholars, with the students of knowledge. So when Harun died, his two brothers, they were fighting over succession, the Khilafah. Who were those two brothers? Do you know their names? Amin and Mu'mun, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Of course, there was a third guy, Al-Mu'tasim. But now Mu'tasim was, you know, standing and watching. The rivalry was between Amin and Mu'mun. Again, two brothers from the same father, but two different mothers. Amin's mother was Arab. Mu'mun's mother was Persian from Khurasan. So they were fighting. Their father said, listen, after I die, the first caliph after me is Amin, the second is Ma'mun, the third is Mu'tasim. But when he died, as we see sometimes in some of the kingdoms, you know, once the king dies, the crown prince, he removes some, and he brings his own son. It happens. It has been happening for hundreds of years. This is not something new. So Amin said, I don't want my brother to succeed me. I have children. Let my children succeed me. So he sent his troops to Khurasan to murder his brother Ma'mun. Ma'mun was in Khurasan at that time, in Tus. But this army failed. Khurasanis, mashallah, are very, you know, they have Zurkhana and, you know, they are muscular. He couldn't defeat the Khurasanis. His army was defeated. Now, when his army was defeated, Ma'mun said, I will teach you a lesson. He sent his army from Khurasan to Baghdad all the way. They marched, you know, hundreds of kilometers to Baghdad. And Baghdad was under siege for one year and a half. A year and a half was under siege until the Khurasani army under the leadership of Ma'mun was able to enter the city of Baghdad. And they captured Al-Amin and they beheaded him. <laughs> they cut his head immediately. And they sent his head to his brother Ma'mun. This is a gift for you. So Ma'mun became the caliph. And Ma'mun wanted to take revenge from the Abbas side because during this conflict, most of the Abbas side they took side with Amin against Ma'mun. So he said, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm going to remove the capital from Baghdad to Khurasan as a punishment. So he removed the capital from Baghdad. Baghdad was the capital. Al-Mansur, before them, he built the city of Baghdad and made it the capital of Islam, the Abbasid dynasty. So this capital was removed from Baghdad to Khurasan, and Ma'mun became the caliph. When he became the caliph, he wanted to win the support of Ahlul Bayt. So what is the best way to win their support? Is to bring Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida, who is very well known, very popular in his knowledge, in his piety, in his integrity. People love him. And people have been waiting for the imam, those imams to be the caliphs, not Bani al-Abbas. He said, I'm going to restore the Khilafah for Ahlul Bayt. So I'm going to bring Ali ibn Musa al-Rida all the way to Khurasan to be the heir to the throne, to be Waliyul Ahd. The crown prince. Imam al-Rudha, he knew this is a game. 
Bani al-Abbas, none of them will give the authority, the power to Ahlul Bayt. None of them. And Imam Rida had no political ambition. Ahlul Bayt, alhamdulillah, they are celebrities. They are famous. They are being beloved by the masses, by the people. They don't need to sit on the chair. None of them was, you know, fond of this seat or this chair. Even when Imam Ali became Khalifa, Imam Ali did not have a seat, did not have an office. Imam Ali's office was in, in the streets of Kufa. He didn't have a, a room to sit in it. They don't have political ambitions. Allah appointed them universal leaders, not leaders of Khurasan or Baghdad or Damascus, universal leaders. So he didn't, he refused. But Ma'amun al-Abbas, he said to him, the alternative, if you don't accept, is death, just like your father. So you have to come. This is why he traveled all the way from Medina at the age of 52, year 200 Hijri, 200 Hijri, because he died 203. And he knew that he's going to die in Khurasan. In fact, Da'bil al Khuzai comes to him and he recites Qasida, praising Ahlul Bayt. And he mentions the other Imams. Imam al Rida says to him, Afala uziduka baytain. Can I add two bait, two lines to your qasida, to your poetry? He says, yeah. Imam al Rida, this is before his death. He's in Medina. He has not been to Khurasan yet. He says, wa qabrun bitus. Wa qabrun bitus. Because Da'bil was mentioning the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, Imam Musa al-Kadhim. Imam al-Rida said to him, I am going to add my name to the list. But my grave is not here in Medina or in Baghdad. It will be in Khurasan. وَقَبْرٌ بِطُوسٍ يَا لَهَا مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ so Da'bil says to him, whose grave is this? He says, Ali ibn Musa arshad Allahu amrahu wa salla alayhi afdal as salawati. This is my grave. He says, you are in Medina. He says, yes, I'm in Medina now. But they're going to force me to move to Khurasan and I'm going to be poisoned there and die there. And this is what happened. People were celebrating that Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida is the crown prince, is the crown prince, he's the successor. But Imam Rida used to tell them, don't be happy, this would not last long. This is a plot to murder me. And this is what happened. Ma'amun, before physically murdering the Imam, he wanted to murder him spiritually and morally and intellectually. Because he said, I'm bringing Imam al Rida because he's Ali Mu Ali Muhammad. He's the most knowledgeable of the family of the Prophet. Ali Mu Ali Muhammad, this is his title. And he wanted to defeat the Imam in public. So he would invite the leaders of Judaism, Christianity, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, other religions, other philosophers to a debate with Imam al Rida. All those leaders, the scholars, are sitting on one side, Imam al Rida alone on, on the other side. And they start throwing their questions, theological, philosophical questions, and the Imam will answer them. Very intricate, very difficult, very challenging questions. But the Imam, with full of confidence and peace, he would answer them one after the other. And the Ma'moon, he sits there, he says Ahsant to the Imam, but inside him he was boiling out of anger. Out of anger he's boiling. When he could not assassinate the Imam, character assassinate the Imam, he decided to give him the poison and murder him. But alhamdulillah, the Imam, they call him Gharib, but he's not Gharib. In fact, the Imams that are Gharib, are Imam al-Hassan, Imam Zayl al-Abidin, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, and Baqi'ah. Those are the real gharib. 
Imam al Rida is not Gharib. Imam al Rida, millions of people, they flock to his shrine. Now that I am speaking to you, there is no space, there is no place in Mashhad, in his shrine, in his city. Allah has given him dignity and honor and raised his ranks in the dunya and the akhir. And definitely the one who goes and visits him, he will receive. You should have no doubt that you will receive his shafa'ah, his intercession, his help on the day of judgment. And even in this dunya, my friends, I have personal experience with Imam al -Ridha. I am, I am Bacha Karbala. I am born in Karbala. I am born 10 meters from the shrine of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. But I received my hajat and my needs. It was fulfilled when I went all the way to the shrine of Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha in Mashhad. When you go there and you stand before his mausoleum, before his shrine, before his grave and with sincerity with ikhlas with sincerity you should not have doubt in your mind that the imam is not listening to you is not caring is not responding is not answering no you should say it when you do your dua when you ask allah you ask him that there is this is your servant here this is someone who gave his life this is someone who lost his family but now God has substituted him with a bigger family. This is your wali here. This is your imam here. This is what you have appointed for mankind. And ask him with sincerity, with ikhlas. You receive, you receive your needs. You receive, your needs are fulfilled inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alayka ya Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha. Ya hujjat Allah ala ardhih. Ya sayyidina wa mawlana. إنا توسلنا وتوجهنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله مؤمنين on this happy occasion few things I'd like to mention uh, first of all we give condolences to the Daya family for the departure of their father Marhum Haj Roshan Ali Daya, who was buried in Orlando next to his wife, Haj Mumtaz Daya. May Allah bless his soul, inshallah. A good believer, a good mu'min, a good lover of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam And I have no doubt that Allah has gathered his soul, inshallah, with our imams in paradise, with Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam Condolences to his son, to his daughter-in-law, to his grandchildren. And also condolences to the Usaili family for the departure of Marhum, the late Hajj Muhammad Yunus Usaili. May Allah bless his soul and gather him with Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam Also, we'd like to congratulate the Saeed family for the nikah of their daughter, Nika. Yes? Mubarak, inshallah. This is the merger, <coughs> Mubarak to Khanum Saeed. This is the merger of Lebanon and Iran together. We have two mergers so far, the Saeed family and our honorable sister here, Afsane Fazili. Also her daughter is married to a Lebanese brother. So Mubarak for both of them. I am waiting to see the product of this merger, how it's going, because mashallah, two families are beautiful, handsome, so that must be something unique, inshallah. We are waiting to see the product soon. Of course, Muhammad Saeed has arrived two weeks ago, and we are waiting to see him in the mosque, inshallah. Also, we'd like to congratulate our dear brother, Abdullah al hirz his wedding was here in this corner yesterday because of the birthday of Imam al-Ridha with his, with our sister, dear sister, Sayyida Sukaina Husseini. May Allah bless her. She lives in the valley. Yes, give her, give her, mashallah. Mubarak, Mubarak Sukaina. 
We are so happy, Ammu, so happy. Sukaina is one of the best sisters in our community. She travels all the way from the valley to attend the programs here. And I am so happy for Sukaina. When my wife told me last night, as soon as I touched down, she gave me the good news first, alhamdulillah. All the news are good. And she told, I was so thrilled and so happy because Sukaina is excellent and Abdullah is excellent, both of them. We wish them, inshallah, the best life under the protection of Allah and Ahlul Bayt and Imam Sahib Al Asri Wa Zaman, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraja. Tomorrow, inshallah, we have a youth session at 8 p.m., and I'm going to be in that youth session, inshallah. And I'd like to thank Haj Samir Amiri. We have to pray for his health. Haj Samir is our dearest brother, dearest friend. He is the most sincere servant of Ahlul Bayt and Islam in this region. He dedicates his entire life to serving the community. But his health is not good. So we have to pray, sincerely pray, inshallah, for his recovery, inshallah. And he did a great job, you know, refurbishing, painting, giving a facelift to the masjid. Also, we thank the sisters who worked very hard among them sister Sana Hamoud and other volunteers, other brothers, other sisters who work very hard to uh, rejuvenate this Islamic center. We had many things here for the last 23 years they have been stored in the masjid. Antiques, mashallah, ancient antiques. So alhamdulillah, those sisters, they took them out and they cleaned the masjid. May Allah reward them. The best title for a person is the khadim of the masjid, servant of the masjid, a janitor of the masjid. This is, Allah says to Ibrahim in this book, chapter 2. Allah says, وَطَحِّرْ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ وَالْرُكَّعِ السُّجُودِ Ibrahim, you are not only the imam, the leader. You are the janitor of the house, the cleaner of the house. طَحِّرْ, طحر بَيْتِي Ibrahim was cleaning the house too. Cleaning the house, the Kaaba. This is a good title when you serve the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last but not least, good news about the full-time Shia Islamic school in Irvine. The building is not too far from here, only five minutes. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank the board of directors of the school, especially our honorable Dr. Mehdi Taqiyi. Say salawat for him. He worked very hard, very hard, with ikhlas, with dedication, with sincerity, with earnestness to, inshallah, obtain this building. And recently he told me, when I was in Europe, he texted, he said, he got a reduction of 125,000 more, alhamdulillah, on the price. Mu'mineen, so far we have collected almost 4.2 Two billion, million, not billion, sorry, million. <laughs> Inshallah, one day billion. It's not a small amount. It's a huge amount. With the, with the pledges. No, no. With the pledges. No. 4.025. Ahsan. 4.025. We have collected so far. Now we are short on only, inshallah, when we receive the pledges, inshallah, on 325,000 only. The building was 4.8 originally. It was reduced to 4.5 and then another 125,000. So the, the building was 4.375. Yes, Dr. Taqi. 4.375, 4 million and 375,000. So we are short on 325,000, 325, which we can collect now from you before you leave, before you get the dinner of Imam al Rida. It's a good occasion, the birthday of Imam al And believe me, Wallah, trust me on this. When you give someone something, and give the thawab for Imam al-Rida. And ask him, ask Allah through Imam al-Rida 
to get the reward. You will get the reward, believe me. One of the rewards that I got from Imam al-Rada 40 years ago is my wife. My wife here. <laughs> I flew from Tehran just to go there for one hour to visit him and go back to Tehran. I stood in front of him with tears in my eyes, in my eyes and a broken heart. I said, I want you to find me a wife. I want you, Ya Ali ibn Musa from Mashhad, alhamdulillah. The daughter of a leader, Ayatollah in Mashhad, her grandfather, Ayatollah said, Muhammad Hadi Milani, Marja, alhamdulillah. And I give thanks to Allah every day. When you have good family, when you have good wife, when you have good husband, when you have good children, every single day do sujood, special sujood, and give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you don't know when you, don't ha when you have a bad partner, you don't know what will happen to you. You lose everything, not just your money and your house. You lose your dignity, you lose your brain, you lose yourself. When you have a, a bad partner. So when you have a good partner, you have to, good th to give thanks. Every single day. So 325,000, I leave it with you. Hajj Ali Muhammad is sitting here with pen and paper in his hand. If you want to say it to private, you can tell me or tell Hajj Ali Muhammad. Or Sayyid Sadiq, Sayyid Sadiq Nuruddin, or Dr. Taqi. They are sitting here. You can give a pledge. So we can give because we have only 45 days to close the escrow. The escrow was opened 45 days ago on the day of Eid al-Fitr. And it's going to be closed in 45 days from now. And we have to have this money ready, inshallah. We don't want to go to a bank and take a loan from the bank. 325,000. You can give a pledge. Some of you are able to do that as a gift to Imam al Rada, not to me, as a gift to him. And this is Sadaqa Jariya, my friends. We are buying a building for a full time Islamic school, which is very much needed for our children, for your children, for your grandchildren. You cannot leave them in public school anymore during these circumstances. It's dangerous. So please help us out. Dr. Taqi, do you want to say something? Please, please come here to the podium. No, no, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Dr. Taqi is telling me someone called him now and said he's donating $100,000. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So now we are short 225. 225. Keep your phone on so in case, because some people are watching us now from afar, from Europe sometimes, some, and we are live. So, inshallah, we receive another phone call, another text, another WhatsApp message, another note, so we can, with the barakah, the blessings of Imam Ali ibn Musa Ridha, alayhi salatu was salam, we can get this done so we can focus on the CUP, which is the conditional use permit. We get it, inshallah ta'ala. We are signing a contract with a professional company to do that for us. And we can begin, inshallah. If the building is secured, we can open it as early as January next year, January, inshallah, with at least the preschool, the kindergarten, and we have a good principal she is a professional in her job she is the principal of another islamic school here in los angeles can you stand sister yolanda hendrix so people can recognize you this is sister uh, yolanda hendrix she is born and raised in the netherlands i just came back from the netherlands very beautiful country and we have very good mashallah good islamic presence in in the netherlands good Muslim community, especially from the Afghan community, huge community, mashallah, very committed, very thriving committee, very vibrant committee. So Sister Yolanda, she will be the principal of the school. She's very professional. And we promise you, inshallah, this school is going to be a real professional school, not a mediocre school, professional. We have the best board members, diverse 
diverse from many ethnicities, alhamdulillah. All of them are professionals, all of them are young, all of them are vibrant, alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, we get Ahsan, Khanum Said Hazar Dullah, 1000. Khaili Mamnun, Khanum Said, Khaili Mamnun. Khoda Ajratum Mede, inshallah, Sepehram, Yehorda Harakat Kone, you know, Tashvikesh Konid. Bala. Inshallah. Yeah, so, inshallah, you help us with this. Uh, Dr. Taqi, do you want to say something? A couple of words here? Yes, inshallah. Dr. Taqi will take over, and after him, inshallah, Hajj Mushtaba would recite for us for the birthday of Imam al Rida alayhi salatu. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Bifam. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. I also would like to congratulate you all on such an auspicious occasion, the birthday of our beloved Imam Raza alayhi salam. I'm sure that every single person who have asked something that Imam Raza go get it from Allah, I'm sure you all have personal story to say. And tonight is your turn to say for the sake of this beloved Imam, I pledge on some money, whatever you can. This person who just called me, he said just for this, because he donated before, he said just for the sake of Imam Reza alayhi salam, I donate another hundred thousand dollars. So, say salawat for him and his family's health, please. So my dear brother and sister, is your turn. Don't leave tonight. You are going to be part of this miracle. This was a miracle. Can you believe that a masjid with like four or five hundred you know, people who uh, permanently attend the masjid, within one month they collect 4.1 million dollars if it's not a miracle of Allah? Uh, in, uh, unbelievable. So be part of this miracle, inshallah, tonight. So raise your hand, please raise your hand. Brother Ali, Sister Yolanda is there. And I promise you, if this board, I mean, if, do, if this, you do not help this board, this Shia school is going to stay a dream. It's not going to happen. This masjid has been working on this school for 22 years. And it never happened until it was time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and inshallah make this a reality. So, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ishan Qab Bissiyar Kumak Kardan. Bale. Thirdly, Bale. Khom Said, Ishan Si Hazar Dollar Gablan Donate Kardan. Bale. It's, it's time. Imam Reza alayhi salam is so generous. Can you, I mean, just recall the memory of what he has given you. And you have to be generous tonight. You have to be generous. $100, $1,000. We need $250,000. And you, it's your turn. Believe me, you're going to get the reward 100% more. But it's your turn. This is, this is a test. Believe it or not, I mean, since I we started this last November, I've seen that Allah is helping. So if you do not help, someone else is going to help. But now make sure that you help. You be part of that miracle that Allah has worked on it. خانم سعید می فرما فارسی بگید. بله چش. اتفاقا خانم سعید درست می فرمایی. چرا میجر بیشتره این چهار میلیون و صد نه نمیتونم بگم بیشتر چهار میلیون و صد ولی تعداد افرادی که دونیت کردن شاید تعداد افرادی که من لیستو که نگاه میکردم که ایرانی هستن بیشتر از شش نفر نیست سو so, ایرانی های عزیز باید یه مقدار این عدد رو ببرید بالا بله سو <laughs> so, لطف کنید چون وقت نمیخوایم وقتتون رو زیاد بگیریم امشب شب جشن و شادی هستش لطف کنید کمک کنید ببینید یکی از چیزهایی که خداوند کمک کرد من فکر نمی کنم من خودم باور نمی کردم من ظرف مثلا حدود 17 سال که توی این کار ریال استیت هستم ندیده بودم که یه دفعه قلب یه فروشنده 
انقدر نرم بشه که بیاد 125 هزار دلار یه دفعه کمک کنه بگه باشه من میدم یه همچین چیزی و این, این, این هم خودش جز اون معجزاتی است که خداوند الحمدلله رسانده خب من میخواستم ببینم برادر علی و سیستر یولاندا what is the total بله احسن برای سلامتی خانواده آی دکتر خدایی و مادر محترمشون یه سلوات بفرستی اللهم صل علی محمد و علی محمد I, I would like to hear 50000 dollars 235 on yours mashallah ah, okay okay no no problem no problem. take your time inshallah sister you have to match that قسمت برادرها 23000 دلار جمع کردن شما 27000 دلار که انشالله 50000 دلار امشب تامین بشه و دیگه ما بتوانیم با این برد با خیال راحت برن دنبال و من بهتون قول میدم من خودم همینجوری که حاج آقا فرمودن انقدر از امام رضا حاجات برای من از خداوند گرفته که اصلا هر چی هم تمام زندگی من بدم مدیونش هستن و شما میدانم که همینجوره انشالله امشب نوبت شماست ببینم چه کار میکنید برای امام رضا انشالله ما در ماه نوامبر امام محترم مسجد حاجه های قزوینی به بنده زنگ زدن گفتن بیایم دوباره مدرسه رو یه مروری بکنیم من پیش خودم گفتم مدرسه تو ارواین اصلا مگه ممکنه این 5-6 میلیون 7-8 میلیون دلار پول میخواد مدیر بارز میخواد مدیر قوی میخواد ولی باشه به هر حال مرور بکنیم بعد یه دفعه دیدیم خداوند یه فرشته فرستاد گفت من سه میلیون دلار میدم ما گفتیم پس دیگه صد درصد این انجام شده نیست چون کار خدا بله این بک نوامبر اور بلاوت امام ایسید مصطفی القزوینی called me and said let's review the, the school one more time because 20 years ago we did that we spent many I mean a sleepless night at the masjid to see if we can open an Islamic Shia school but we were not able then we said okay we are no problem let's review it and at that time I said wow how much you know we need five million dollars at least for for building and how we can find the building in Erwin finding a, a school place in Erwin is almost close to impossible because all the nationalities now the Jew the, the religious Jews Christian Indian Chinese they all are looking for private school because of the fact of what is going on on public schools so they all looking and is almost impossible we looked with uh, Haj Ali at least 20 buildings and each one has some kind of problems and alhamdulillah at the very last moment when we were about to be discouraged Allah found this building for us. Allahumma oh. salla Another one thousand dollars salawat befrasti hajay gulam rizai. Ah, thousand dollar hajay gulam rizai and the wife of the Muhtaramishan. Inshallah, that the spirit of the beloved of them with Imam Riza will be restored in the evening. Inshallah. برای برای خاله خانم شما می‌خواید چیزی بفرمایید؟ عمه خانم؟ عمه جان بله 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 بسیار. برای روح پدر مادراتون اونا منتظرن. برای به خاطر امام رضا علیه السلام بر هدیه کنید به روح اونها اونا که دستشون کوتاه شده. ان شاء الله شما کمک کنید که خوشحال بشن اونا در در اون دنیا و برای شما دعا کنه. If you want your parents If you want your parents to pray for you and ask Allah to help you, tonight is the night. Tonight is the night that inshallah you help. Sister Yolanda, do we have a total? 3,950. 3,950? No, no. I think that's, that's supposed to be 30. So we need three sisters to pledge $10,000 each. And sisters, you do not work for that money. Why you are, you know, stingy? Ah, Sarkar Khanum Shapuri, who is here, who is the manager of the school on Sunday, and how much work they do, and 
و واقعا دستتان درد نکنه هزار دلار برای سلامتیشون هم یه سلوات بفرستید Sister Sokaina, one thousand dollar. Oh, newly wed, mashallah, congratulations, congratulations. May inshallah Imam Raza alayhi salam keep you together forever, happy and healthy, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah your children go to this school. 37,450, including what she has. 37,450, so we are, we are very close. We only need 12,000 uh, uh, 12, dollars, right? Yeah, 12 to... To, to 50, yeah. yeah, we wanted to close with 50, inshallah. We need $12,000. $12,000 nowadays with the inflation and the stuff is nothing, you know. I, you know, please, at least 12 people, you know, help, or six people help with $2,000 each. I don't want to keep you, mashallah, say loud. Alhamdulillah. Say loud salawat for that gentleman, for our dear brother. Allahumma shalla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, not only Imam Reza is going to pray for you, everybody else is going to pray for you too. Because they say, oh, they, this gentleman revealed that. I heard that some of the donations of the women went to the men. Okay, so that's good news, Alhamdulillah. They said the woman helped as much as the men because some of the Numbers went to Brother Ali instead of coming to Sister Yolanda. Ay Muhammad Sharifi, Bah Bah Hassan, Bar Shoma. Khuda Inshallah ke komak kona ke Inshallah Shoma dar inja sakin beshit. Hazar dollar mishan dadan. Baray Ay Sharifian, Ay Ahmed Sharifian. Bale. Baray salamati khudishun khanavadishun salawat mahabat koni.